Hello and welcome to Kicking Kickstarter with me, Jekylls, and we are here to talk about the Kickstarter project, Ordinary Heroes. So, tell us a bit about Ordinary Heroes. Uh, it wasn't a project that started a while back that uh, we always wanted to do a comic that was just about us. We lived together years ago as roommates, and uh, we always wanted to do a comic about our misadventures. We never really had... We, uh, we, uh, so we, had, we had a comic idea... Uh, that started, this is the two of us and some wacky companions and this never went anywhere. And then we uh, created Ken, uh, who in the comic book uh, now, in his current incarnation, is the wheelchair. He's paraplegic. And uh, something happens in his life uh, that causes him to uh, gain a second personality. He's got a multiple personality disorder. And the second personality is a 50s 60s Silver Age style uh, crime fighting superhero that goes out at night and fights pimps and drug dealers and, and the like. And uh, the issue, of course, with multiple personality disorder is one personality does not know the other personality. So, and in Ken's, you know, he's paraplegic. It's a, it's a mental block. It's not a physical, something's wrong with his spinal cord, or nothing like that. It's just that he's not been able to walk since he's been a child. And, uh, so, so that happens, he starts crown fighting at night, he wakes up, goes out, kicks ass, comes home, goes to sleep, wakes up, as Ken, he's real tired, he can't figure out what the hell is going on with him. So, uh, the, the general, the gist of the story is, we find this out, we realize that if we don't help our friend, he's gonna die, because... In the daytime, he can't walk. He's in a wheelchair. He doesn't know anything about these villains that are coming out or the woodwork trying to assassinate him and all that. So we kind of kind of have the old storyline where we, me and Derek, are kind of like the, the main main duos. We still live together in the comic. And uh, we're just our goofy misadventures uh, trying to help him fight crime. A long story short, we got together. Derek had uh, found a way to do our art. That was another thing I didn't mention was our art is atrocious. We can't draw. Um, I stopped drawing artistically about 12, 13. Uh, Copy and Todd McFarlane and the like from the old uh, image comic days. But never got any good at it. Um, but Derek finds a way to Photoshop. Uh, slab action shot. And he's like, dude, we should totally act this comic out. Um, I got down to writing the script. And uh, we started putting it together. And uh, once, once we saw it, once we saw, once we made our own costumes, for one, and uh, got to see our, our the art style uh, brought to life, it was just an amazing thing. It was just something that was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be so cool. This is something totally different. And uh, and uh, we just had to do it. And uh, we didn't know how to do it once you know once the artwork was put together because we're like, well, you know, where do I get the money mm. published and everything else? And that's where the Kickstarter campaign uh, came in. Um, Derek's been a big proponent of Kickstarter for a while, and uh, just love the idea of um, of doing it that way. And it's like, well, I was gonna do black and white, and we can kind of pay for it out of our pockets. And once Derek showed me the beautiful color, the art, everything about it, it was just like, no, yeah, we what? cannot do black and white. Black and white kind of ruins the effect. The color, yeah. the color, his art style and color is beautiful. So it's like Kickstarter it is. So he kind of introduced me to that. Uh, how that all worked, and uh, that's kind of where we are right now. Where did the um, thought of having a schizophrenic, paraplegic, crime-fighting hero come from? <laughs> uh, I don't know exactly where the dark recesses of our mind uh, he came from. Um, I think at one point in time he was always a guy in a and uh, I don't know. And the guy that plays him is not, obviously not in the wheelchair, he could, he could be a superhero, but um, mm. I don't know where it came from, well, I mean, uh, the multiple personality disorder. Originally, the idea of the comic years ago had a lot of crazy characters, and it seems like all of them had like a good thing and a bad thing, because one of the original characters was called the Immortal Suicidal. <laughs> Basically, an immortal guy that was suicidal. He was constantly emo and just on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was constantly trying to find ways to kill himself. That's all he was wanting to do. <laughs> he's just like, like, it was a hobby of his. And he knew he couldn't, nothing could happen from it. But he kept trying anyway. Yeah, and uh, of course, now the comics set reality. 
reality, so that character doesn't is impossible to have. But uh, mm. I guess it's kind of you know the same thing. You have a superhero, but he's also wheelchair bound. And... Yeah. Yeah. I don't, and like I said, I've read comics since I was a kid, and I don't know of a character like this. Uh, there's not too many uh, handy capable people in comics. You know, you got Barbara Gordon, I guess, for Batman, but like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, um, I actually didn't wear it with the, the uh, shirt. I got a hoodie on there too, and people, you know, going to grocery for all, I was like, what is that? Like, oh, it's awesome. So it's kind of cool. And they tell you that it's a good idea, but they look at you crazy, like, oh my god, this guy's insane. <laughs> Did it just cut? Did um, coming the making the comic book come out of uh, just wanting to be in a comic book yourselves? <laughs> well, for years, uh, as I mentioned, we can't. You know, neither of us can draw. We were uh, we we always kind of worked on little small projects. We're in a band together, and uh, we always kind of joked about making a little movie or something. But um, I had been writing comics. I made my own comics. I used to copy the Todd McFarlane, the Jim Lee's when I was a kid, and uh, I still have a little staple of 11 and a half, or 8 and a half, probably 11 comic books from, from my childhood. Um, but once I got to my 20s, um, started writing more, um, I still couldn't draw. You know, that was the big problem, and it's hard to find everybody that still plays in a band, and, you know, he wants to take his vision and make other people, you know, follow him. It's hard to get, you know, an uh, artist that's like, hey, I want to draw exactly what you tell me to draw. And, I, and, I, and it was really hard for me to find a collaborator that I wanted to work with. And for some reason, their Photoshop crowd was kicked up. Yeah, that's something that one person that he's got to Yeah, the love of it. So, I've always said I wanted to put a comic book out there. So, good. And you've uh, also done a tune as well. Kickstarter. Yeah, so like the, we were in a band, and uh, we were uh, hanging out with my friend who's, who's still kicking around uh, his, his band, and uh, his little studio, and uh, he decided, hey, you know, like, we're down here, why not? We're down there for the weekend uh, visiting, and uh, we just got in the studio and just recorded a little tune, a little goofy tune we wrote. And, uh, at the time, with the Kickstarter uh, campaign, you got the comic and the game, the video game and the music. Um, they're all kind of not very uh, canonical, like the music. We kind of had other ideas on uh, other ideas with uh, other ideas with uh, you know some characters. Some, there's a couple characters mentioned uh, in the song that we don't uh, haven't gotten to yet in the comic book uh, universe, but uh, but the song is. Uh, uh, we were always a uh, kind of rock and punk slash heavy metal band in the back of the day, so it's kind of kind of what it is, what it's based around. Mm -hmm. And the you briefly said it then, but the video game as well. So the video game is uh, was mastered is a big believer in Steam on uh, you know, uh, PC games, and uh, he told me about RPG Maker, so we got on there. I was playing around with it. And uh, that's the engine we used to build it. And uh, I pretty much used assets in the comic. Uh, the little pirate we used Google searching and some other images for the, for the game. But uh, it's just the game built around that little universe. And uh, it's goofy as hell. It's got the comedy. Uh, it's a turn based RPG. I've been playing a lot of Final Fantasy lately. And uh, I was just like, you know, this would be fun. You know, It'd be fun to make a you know, hack and slash game with us, starring us, that'd be cool, but uh, the JRPG is still a neat little uh, uh, genre, so I started building it in that. It's a great way to tell a story, too. There's a lot of story involved in, in RPG, so uh, I've got a lot of our sick humor. It uh, does have a lot of sick humor. Our uh, inside jokes, I guess. Yeah. So some explain it. Yeah. And there's some stuff that'll, you know, it's maybe explain more. Uh, some jokes we make uh, in the comic that uh, we better explain, you know, by playing the game and vice versa. And maybe some things that we don't, maybe we leave out those inside jokes uh, here and there, and then maybe the hints that we put in the game or the comic or whatever, and the song kind of help all tie it together. The big thing for me was I wanted to build a universe, you know, like I wanted you to read the comic and, uh, you know, you kind of get, get a sense of 
what's going on and, and the comic itself. You know, I wanted to do a 32 page story um, or a 32 page comic standard size, but usually comics have ads. And you know, we wanted to give people a lot of material. So to help build that universe, you know, alongside the game, alongside the song, you got, you know, short stories I think we're going to be putting in throughout the, um, throughout the run. That a local artist, local artist, we're trying to get some people. There's some, there's some ideas that we want to do, like uh, being Alan Moore guy. Love Alan Moore from England, you know. Yeah, you know Alan Moore. Uh, is, is anything he usually does. I mean, in terms of, in terms of, uh, uh, he finds a way to tell the story. It's either yeah. I'm gonna do a pulp fiction short story in the back of the issue or whatever, just to give you a better idea. So that's that's where I come from in terms of how to write, and that's what I want yeah. uh, people to buy when they pick up the right hero. Someone's gonna know what is going on and kind of get a good feel that they're in it. Yeah. How long have you been working on the universe of ordinary heroes to get it where it is to now with the games and the music and the comic books and the short stories and everything? How long has it taken you? Uh, the idea is probably like, what, eight, ten years old? Yeah, it's been that. forever just sitting around. And, uh, and working on the first issue is probably a year or two. I moved off away. Off. I moved away. And uh, it, was, you know, it was in a position where it was kind of hard for me to get back. And uh, once we came, I had a couple pages done, and all of a sudden I moved away, and this is kind of like went dormant for a while. And uh, I moved back over the summer, and uh, we had the story arc for the first probably ten issues, like the first six to ten issues done a year or two ago. And uh, it wasn't until I moved back that we just hit it hard, and it's been done now for a while. The first issue has. We're just trying to find a way to, you know, get it out there and um, it's, it's difficult because it's like shooting a movie where, you know, both if we're in the scene, we both have to be present, or any other actors in the scene, like our buddy Ken, that it's the uh, wheelchair bound superhero, and we have to have you know the time of day set, where the location is, and uh, that just makes it all uh, extra difficult. Yeah, how? What plan? What plan do you have in mind to when you're ready to publish it and get it out there? What plan do you have in mind to get it out there to the masses and promote it further? Uh, well, there's uh, a couple things with the Kickstarter. We look at other Kickstarters. People will charge insane amounts uh, of money for uh, for an issue, and so we went a route that was like, well, you know, we'll keep it, we'll keep it keep it low priced and uh, and uh, we're not saying to make a lot of money on it but we're trying to take that and kind of roll it into our you know first print run and uh, we plan to distribute um, of course to our Kickstarter supporters um, we have got some local comic local comic shop um, that will let us just post up whenever we need out the table on a Saturday you know, morning and just sign autographs and, and sell them ourselves. Uh, we don't really have a set look, you know, like a distribution set up right now. Um, oh, that's well. Yeah, online. I, I moved into the 21st century here and still a little behind. Uh, I'm good with online stuff on the first issue. Uh, I'm a starter. I'm kind of switched my, my, my purchasing to digital and, uh, and I'm really big on uh, um, like getting out there Digitally, man, I'd love to get in print too, but like, I think uh, we're planning to do something on, on the website itself uh, to get it out there. Um, feature issues will probably be, you know, digital release through our website, and um, until it can blow up, if we can get it, you know, to where we're selling a lot more issues, then yes, of course, we need to step out and, and uh, worry about a distribution. But right now, it's the love of it. Um, we just want to get people. You, um, your goal amount was quite sh small. Yeah, uh, originally we wanted to do one of the uh, one dollar goals, like some Kickstarters do. Mm -hmm. Basically, you know, say, hey, we don't care how much we get, we're gonna make it no matter what. Just we're looking for, we like your help. But uh, Kickstarter came back and was like, oh no, you gotta have a real goal amount. 
kind of what well, sorry where can people go to find out more about ordinary heroes because you mentioned that you're active on twitter and facebook so where can they go to find you guys probably uh facebook uh if you search like ordinary heroes you can find it there uh we also have the website which is ordinaryheroescomic.com and uh once we get things rolling past this kickstarter we try to update those regularly and Thank you very much, Brian Deck, for talking about Ordinary Heroes.